Okay, let's see something good. Um, I'm just getting focused on the star Arcturus here. Uh, Arcturus is the fourth brightest star in the sky. It's a lovely uh, golden yellow giant star and you can find it just by following the arc of the handle of the Big Dipper to Arcturus. So you arc to Arcturus. And um, Arcturus is, is well known among astronomers because it's a very fast moving star in our sky. It's, uh, it's moved about two full moon diameters across the sky uh, with respect to the background stars just in the last 1600 years, which is pretty fast for a star. It's moving quite quickly towards the constellation Virgo and in several tens of thousands of years will tens of thousands of years will become much fainter than it is right now. So it looks like we're focused and I'm just going to head off to the first object in our tour in the constellation Coma Berenices. So uh, here we go. Okay, so our first target tonight is the globular cluster M53. Now this part of the sky is better known for galaxies, but there are a few globular clusters around, and uh, M53 is one of the better ones. There it is. Uh, it's about magnitude 7.6. Not super bright. Certainly visible in a finder scope. Uh, let me give the telescope a little nudge here to get it better centered. There we go. That's it. So that's a little better. Um, so you could see the, the shape of it. I'm just going to get a little bit more light on the camera here. and You'll get a better view. That's it. That's better. Let me just tweak the contrast. And here we go. That's better. Okay, so you see a nice little blizzard of stars here around a fairly compact core. Most globulars look a little bit like this. And M53 is a reasonable size uh, cluster. It's got maybe half a million stars. It's a little fainter than the more famous clusters like M13 uh, in Hercules or or uh, 47 Toucanet in the Southern Hemisphere because it is quite far away. It's about 60,000 light years away, uh, which is about half the diameter of the Milky Way, so it is a bit of an outlier. But it's still large enough to present a fairly nice view in a small telescope. This is what you might see in an 8 to 10 inch telescope in reasonably dark sky. Okay, just to show that uh, not all globular clusters look the same, let's look one degree to the east-southeast of M53 at the much fainter globular cluster NGC 5053. There it is right now, uh, just above the center line of this image. Uh, so you can see it's much sparser than M53, despite the fact that it lies at about the same distance, about 54,000 light years away. So this cluster is much more open and it has far fewer stars and it's intrinsically fainter than M53. And if you have a uh, good dark sky and at least a one degree field of view, you can get both these clusters in the same field of view of a telescope. A very pleasant image in this uh, galaxy strewn part of the sky. And speaking of galaxies, here, let's take a look at an old favorite here. I had this in the last video. It is the Edge-On Galaxy, NGC uh, 4565, uh, the Flying Saucer Galaxy. And here it's going to look a little bit bigger than in the last video, because I'm using uh, a longer focal length telescope here. It's a 6-inch F9 telescope, uh, focal reduced down by about a factor of three. but. Uh, that gives me about 50% longer focal length than last time. So we're seeing a nice big image here. The sky is a little bit washed out by light pollution, even on this very clear night. But still, you can see the tight core, the dust lane, and the, uh, the edge-on spiral arms here. So let's take a quick look at this one. And then we're going to go just a couple of degrees away. Okay, so here we are about uh, two degrees north of NGC 4565, and we're going to look at uh, another galaxy, NGC 45, uh, 4559. Uh, it's often overlooked for its uh, more famous neighbor. Here it is. 
Uh, it's a, a spiral galaxy. It's tilted about 69 degrees from edge on, where from face on rather, whereas uh, NGC 4565 is 83 degrees from face on. So we're seeing more of the spiral arms here, and you can see the galaxy is not so needle-like. This is also a member of the Coma Sculptor Cloud of Galaxies, and it's about the same size as the Milky Way, about 100,000 light years across. And you're looking at the light of about 40 billion suns here. The spiral arms are fairly loosely wound, and it's got a tight nucleus. We're getting not a lot of contrast here. I don't have a light pollution filter in tonight, so we are getting a little bit of brightened sky. But you can see a little hint of the spiral arms here. Okay, now let's make one more stop. Uh, one, another galaxy, the, perhaps the most famous in Coma Berenices. Here it is. It is M64, sometimes called the Black Eye Galaxy, which is another spiral galaxy, but it has a very prominent dust lane, as you can see. It was first seen by William Herschel, and he named it the Black Eye Galaxy, saying it contained one lucid spot like a star with a small black arch under it. So it gives one the idea of what's called a black eye arising from fighting, said Herschel. Now this galaxy, it's about 19 million light years from Earth, and it's got a radius of about 40,000 light years, so about 40% the size of the Milky Way. It's an interesting galaxy. In uh, the 1990s, astronomers with the Hubble Space Telescope found that the gas in the outer region of M64 rotates opposite to the gas in stars in the, in the inner region. So the idea is that this galaxy must have formed in its current state by uh, two galaxies that merged and they were rotating in opposite directions. So that's partly what gives it such a striking uh, dark dust lane. This is roughly the view you'd get in well maybe a six to eight inch telescope at, at maybe a hundred to hundred and fifty power. You'll be able to see the eye quite clearly. It's a very nice galaxy, intriguing and lovely to look at. So let's uh, leave our tour there for this evening, and I wish you a very pleasant evening, and I hope you join us uh, in our next telescope tour.